Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members all across 150 countries, a place to get inspired, learn new skills, and put them to work in impactful ways. As you guys know, I like learning about different mediums, and recently I found a really cute class that I'd like to share with you guys today. The class is called Modern Embroidery, Beginner to Pro, More Than 20 Stitches and Pattern by Ginny Nunes. Firstly, just from watching the intro, I was hooked because of how everything was displayed. Ginny's way of presenting is so colorful and aesthetically pleasing to look at, which made me really engaged to learn straight away. This class covered different types of stitches that we can apply to different compositions, and Ginny went through each stitch and pattern very slowly that it was really easy to follow. She also showed us close-ups so we can follow each step of the way. Just because it's a class on patterns though, doesn't mean that you won't have something to show by the end of the class because Ginny turned the patterns into its very own composition which looks super cute together. So even people who are using this class as a form of exercise or just getting to know the stitches can still have a finished artwork to display by the end of it. I personally find this class very pleasant and informative and this is something that I would definitely recommend for you guys who are interested in embroidery or just trying out a different medium. Now is the perfect time to invest in yourself. With Skillshare membership, you can engage in your hobbies and passion all year long. The first thousand people to click the link in my description box will get a one month free trial to test it out risk free. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting a stream which is based on a picture or a video that I took when I was traveling around East Java. I really like the scenery but it was actually really difficult to figure out how to simplify and turn it into a painting due to how busy the greeneries are. This is why I probably won't classify this video as a tutorial but maybe more as a paint through because I wasn't even sure myself what I was painting or the steps that I was taking but either way I hope you guys find it somewhat useful still. I started by sketching out the main areas like I tried to figure out where the land and the water starts and I also tried to figure out the direction of the water which was quite difficult because of how rocky the surface underneath the water was. In the image that you see on my phone here the values are actually much clearer as my camera wasn't picking up all the information of the picture and this would actually be a benefit for you guys so hopefully this video is more useful for you as reference compared to the original video or the image that I use for my reference. So this is the original video. As you can see, the video is much brighter and because of this, all the details show through and the composition looks quite flat due to the lack of value, contrast, or even depth of field but I just tried my best to make it work in my head somehow. I think next time if I were to paint something as complex as this one, I'd probably edit the image first so I can figure out how to simplify it in the planning stage. So here are the colors I'll be using. This is Sepia by Holbein, Paints Grey Bluish by Schmincke, Azure Blue by White Knights, Aquarius Green by Roman Schmal, Has a Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, Vermilion by Holbein, Titanium Gold Ochre by Schmincke, and Bleedproof White by Dr. Paige Martins. I'm going to begin by painting the light greens very loosely for the leaves. For this, I use a mix of Hansi Yellow Medium with Aquarius Green, and I'm just going to place it very loosely on top of the leaves that I drew out. I'm not worried about going over the lines, but I don't want to get any of the green on the flowers. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of Aquarius Green and paint it outside of the line of the leaves. And it doesn't really matter if the previous green is still a little bit damp because I'm just going to paint this as the base color very loosely. Again though, I don't want to paint over any of the flowers. So I am painting very slowly and carefully as I'm approaching near the areas. Once I reach the right hand side, I'm going to do the same thing to apply the base color of the leaves here. I'm starting with the yellow green and then I'm going to paint around it using Aquarius Green. On the left hand side, I'm going to add a brown color. This is from a mix of sepia and vermilion. And I'm just going to paint over the lines that I've already painted. Then I added a bit more sepia in the mix to create a darker brown and I just placed it in between the tree trunks. 
As for the leaves here, I'm treating it the same way using the light yellow green from Aquarius Green and Hansi Yellow. But surrounding it, I'm going to use the same brown mix as before with added Aquarius Green for the rocks. Just like before though, I'm going to be very careful when I paint around the flowers because I want to leave it as white off the paper for now. I'm also going to bring the brown across to the top underneath the tree that I initially painted and for this brown I added a bit more vermilion just to brighten it slightly. Next I'm going to paint on the rocks on top of the water. For this I started with the yellow green mix to paint on the moss then I just used the brown that I already had on my palette. I also darkened the bottom by adding a bit more sepia. As for the base of the water, I used a mix of azure blue, aquarius green, and sepia. I like to paint per section and where the area of the water is flowing down, I paint it as curved lines just as a visual note for the next layers. This is where I actually found it a bit confusing logically because I wasn't sure how the water is going to flow from several directions. I tried to paint on lines in the direction of where the water is flowing thinking that it'll help me get an idea of how the water would react to each other from different directions. I don't think it worked. I think I should have just painted the water as flat colors as the base instead so there isn't too much detail already from the amount of negative space and harsh edges right from the beginning. I think I would actually need to do further study on painting streams so I'll try to find an easier composition next time and hopefully get to learn something new in the process. But just for the sake of this painting, getting back to the steps or my thinking process, I tried to use a darker value with more sepia in the ratio where the water is flowing down because I feel like the water is in closer contact with the rocks and as I get to the pools of water, I used a bit more azure blue in the ratio. As the base color, I'm only using a light to medium consistency so I can keep building up on the layers for more detail. After I paint the base layer, I'm going to go back to the trees at the top again. Here I'm going to use the same mix from Hansi Yellow and Aquarius Green. With this, I'm going to paint in between the leaves. This way the edges of the leaves will become clearer and more defined. After the color is dry, I'm going to do some negative painting and paint more leaves in between and just painting on whatever surrounding the leaves. These are leaves that I haven't drawn out, so I just kind of made them along the way as I'm painting. I'm also going to apply the same technique for the leaves on the right hand side. So I'm just going to keep painting on more layers and making up more leaves as I layer on more paint. For the area at the bottom though, I tried to also add on leaves which are not negatively painted. And as I keep building on the layers, I'm going to try to use a darker value. With this, I would just add more Aquarius Green and the mixture, and on the right hand side here, I also added a little bit of sepia. I'm also going to do some negative painting on the left hand side. Here I used the same mixture from Aquarius Green and sepia, and I'm going to paint in between the tree trunks that I sketched out. I 
I'm going to apply something similar on the left hand side where the leaves are. I feel like the lines of the leaves were a bit unclear so here I'm using the yellow green mix to just paint around some of the leaves to make the outline a little bit more clear. And then I'm going to use a brown mix from sepia and vermilion to paint the rocks behind the leaves as the base color. While painting on the rocks, I also took this opportunity to clear out the lines of the leaves again. And instead of just using one tone, I tried to play around with the values by mixing up the ratio and playing with the consistency so certain areas are a bit darker and others lighter. Once the surface of the rocks are dry, I'm going to use some of the green mix that I already had on my palette. This would likely have some Curry's Green and Hansi Yellow. I'm going to paint on some more leaves behind the ones that I've already painted. Then I'm going to go back in with a thicker consistency of the brown mixture to paint around those leaves. Since the leaves are a bit smaller on the right hand side here, I'm not going to add as much detail. Instead, I just want to make sure that the outline is nice and clear. Next, I'm going to go back to the tree trunk again. I'm going to use the same brown mixture from Aquarius Green, Sepia, and a bit of Vermilion. And this time, I'm just freehanding some more tree trunks. But on the right hand side here, as you can see, the brown is already really thick so instead of negatively painting around more tree trunks I used a clean damp brush to take off some paint instead to paint the additional tree trunk. Next I'm going to paint the water again. I feel like I should have worked from the bottom up so I don't end up painting on too much detail at the back. This is where I feel like I made the mistake and made the painting look more flat because the details are too sharp for something so far back. So I feel it's best to leave the water at the back blurry instead of it having the same amount of detail as the water in front. This is also where I struggled with the direction of the water. I feel like even if I were to paint lines to figure out the direction, I should have curved my lines to make it look more flowy instead of having all these straight lines in different directions which in the end left out a lot of sharp angular negative shapes. With this said though, this isn't something that I thought of in the middle of painting but it's something that I reflected back as I'm editing and going back through the footage so my next steps won't actually reflect what I mentioned before about the amount of details and so on so please just bear with me in keeping up with my thought process as I was painting this. Here after painting on the second layer of water, I started to add the darker colors. I'm still using the same mix as the base with Aquarius Green, Azure Blue, and Sepia in different ratios to create different tones. I also played around with the consistency more using a thicker consistency here in order to fix the line direction of the water, especially where the water is flowing downwards. And I also used this dark value to paint the rocks continuing down underneath the water from the ones which are above water level. After painting on the darker values, I feel like a lot of the saturation of the leaves are gone. So I'm going to paint some of them again using the light yellow green color just to bring up the saturation. Next, I'm going to paint on the flower. I first use a thin consistency of titanium gold ochre to paint the top part of the flower. Then I'm going to follow this up by using a light consistency of Hansi Yellow. For the bottom, I used a mix of titanium gold ochre with a bit of vermilion to create a peachy color. And I'm just going to soften the edges using a clean damp brush after applying this right at the edges of the bottom of the flower. After that, I felt like the color faded too much, so I'm going to add the same mixture, but this time with more titanium gold ochre in the mix to paint the top part of the flower again. After that, I'm going to add a bit of detail to the stone here by using a bit of sepia with Aquarius Green. And then I'm going to start adding details to the water with Bleed Proof White. 
I want to add white to the bottom of the water rolling downward, so I'm just tapping with my small brush to paint on some form of texture using bleed proof white. I also felt like I needed to add another drop in the middle of the larger pool, so I decided to use the blue mix to add more to the rolling water texture, then add more bleed proof white at the bottom as the water splatters. Where the water pools, I tried to paint on some squiggly wavy lines because I thought that this might take away from the mess that I've created with the previous texture of the water. It kind of did, but I also knew that the white is too strong of a contrast with the rest of the painting. So I'm going to layer on the darker blue on top and work back and forth with the darker and lighter value until I find an okay balance between the two. This will also help create the edge of the strokes that I'm looking for. For the water near the rocks, I also want the white of the water to interact with it because it will splatter near those areas as well. But I'm going to take it back using the darker mix to play around with the placement of the values again. After placing the water splatters, I'm going to add the darker blue on top of the water splatters just to add a bit of contrast between the white and the darker value. While adding on the dark blues, I also want to mix colors with a bit more green and even a bit of Hansi yellow to make the water less blue and a bit more earthy in some areas. I also want to smudge some of the white to soften the lines by using a damp brush. While creating the water splatters, especially towards the front of the composition, I try to use a really dry brush load so some of the edges of the strokes are a bit more natural and flowy instead of it having a rounded edge. At the back here, I felt like I added too much white and I want to take away some of the details. So here I'm just painting over it using light blue mix, which is from the color of the water with added blue proof white. At the top here, I feel like it doesn't need to be as detailed as what I'm painting at the moment. So I'd personally leave this area blurry to create a bit of contrast in detail, which then adds to the depth of the painting. Personally, I don't actually mind doing this technique even if it looks messy at this point. With how bleed proof white reacts to watercolors, it's really easy to take off and paint on top of. And you can actually smudge the bleed proof white and treat it as watercolors or as gouache. And as you smudge it, it mixes with the blue and then you add more white, which actually adds to the depth of how the water is splattering. So this would be great if it's applied to the bottom area of the painting where it's in focus. But for a larger, more busy sceneries like this one, I feel like I always lose the overall picture because I was focusing too much on each little tiny area when in actuality I need to actually look from further away to get a better balance of the overall picture. I'm going to add more sepia and aquarius green in the mix to add to the area of the rolling water where the water is very shallow and close to the rocks. But I'm also going to glaze this color over some of the blue parts so the water isn't overly blue. I just find that the blue makes the water look deeper than it is and it needs to be a bit more green instead. After working on the detail of the white parts of the water for the foreground, I'm going to take back some of the detail by using a thin consistency of the blue-green mix and I'm just going to paint over some of the white areas as well to blur it out and take away a bit of the detail. Here I'm going to exaggerate the darker values under the rock and I'm just placing on some horizontal lines varying in different lengths. This is when I realized that the back of the stream has a bit too much detail so I'm just going to smudge everything using a clean damp brush then I'm going to paint over it using the blue green mix that I already have on my palette very lightly and while the surface is still wet I added more of the white so the white will bloom out slightly creating a slight blur. 
Once the water looks blurred, I'm going to add more leaves using a dark green mix from Aquarius Green, Paints Grey, Bluish and Sepia in a thick consistency so it looks like it's a distant silhouette but it's still in front of the water since it has sharper edges. I'm also going to add this dark leaf silhouette in front. After painting on the darker values of the water, I feel like I need to bounce out the vegetation at the top. I also want to add a bit more depth to them, so I'm going to use the dark green mix to paint around the leaves that I've already painted. Then using the same mix, I'm going to use my small brush in a lighter consistency to paint on the details of the larger leaves. This also applies to the leaves in the foreground. Here I'm using a very thick consistency of the same green with added sepia to paint on some branches as well. I'm going to add more of the dark leaves at the back. I feel like I need to actually add a bit more of this to add to the depth of the painting, but there isn't any space left because I didn't think this through. Then looking at the painting, I also feel like the flowers are not standing out enough. So I'm going to clean out the thin lines on top where the flower is connecting to the tree with a bit of bleed proof white mixed with titanium gold ochre. And I'm going to leave that to dry while I adjust other areas of the painting. I felt like another factor that played into the lack of depth is the distance between each drop. They're a little bit too even and similar, so at the back I'm going to add another drop to make them closer together. Here I'm going to add extra details like little vines using the really dark green mix. Then I also decided to paint over the flowers using a mix of titanium gold ochre and vermilion to create more of a peachy color so it stands out a bit more against the greens. I also want the values behind the flowers to be darker so the lighter color can pop out a little bit more. So I kind of cleaned up the lines surrounding the flowers using a dark green or for this case I used the dark blue mixture to make the water behind the flower darker. Here I decided to go back to the leaves again adding on the veins of the leaves. Then after this, I'm going to glaze on a little bit of that yellow green to add some more form to the leaves because at the moment it's looking really light and very flat. I feel like I have a pretty good balance at the moment so I'm just going to take off the masking tape after this and try to see what it looks like with a clean frame. After looking at it again, I felt like the vines were kind of disappearing into the background so I decided to use a green mix with bleed proof white to make it opaque and paint on more on top. Then here I decided to blur out more of the water at the back and also line the edges of the flowers using a thick consistency of vermilion and then softening the edges using a clean damp brush. I'm also going to darken parts of the larger leaves at the top to create an overall darker value and to also lose the sharp details. After doing this though, I also felt like the darker values kind of flattened and look a little bit lighter. So here I'm just going to add on more of the darker values in certain areas. This includes the corners of the painting and I want to especially do this to create a vignette effect. And that's basically it for this painting. I have to say this isn't my favorite painting that I've done, but I feel like it's good to share a painting with these types of mistakes from time to time. And I hope you guys can also learn from the mistakes that I made and keep moving forward. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching till the end and I'll see you with the next one. Bye.